Yeah, I just clicked. Okay, Gata, you can start. Hey, yeah, Beam. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to everyone who has joined. Sorry. Hey, Beam. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to everyone who has joined. Sorry. Himanda, should I start? Yes. Okay. Oh, so welcome everyone to the Boston Study Group Ambedkar Lecture Series. Um, as I see a lot of new people joining today. So before um, starting our Ambedkar Lecture Series uh, talk by uh, Professor Kamre, I would like to give a brief introduction about Boston Study Group. A Boston Study Group is an Ambedkar organization <clears throat> based in Boston. Um, it, it was started in 2015 and uh, the, uh, the activities or the basic aim of Ambedkar, uh, basic aim of Boston Study Group is to um, practice and flourish and explore and connect with other like-minded people who are um, into um, uh, work of uh, equity and liberty and fraternity, which aligns with the ideology of Dr. Ambedkar. Uh, along with doing this, we also uh, like um, collaborate and coordinate with other like-minded professors or universities, uh, like by conducting um, conferences and also supporting students from oppressed communities to uh, pursue their dream of higher studies in US or any other countries. Along with doing this work, we also uh, support uh, the organizations which are working in India uh, with the oppressed communities in calamities like COVID and other um, education, as well as supporting them in the work which they are doing with oppressed communities, especially women. So uh, right now we are focused on this. And apart from that, we also um, enhance or enlarge the Ambedkar community with our social, political, and other cultural events or, like which have been organized here in US to um, like, uh, stay connected throughout the US. So like, and if you want to know more, please do visit our uh, website of Boston Study Group. So with this brief introduction, now I would like to uh, introduce you to the today's uh, speaker, Professor Kamble. Uh, Professor Kamble is a professor at the Department of Economics in Kolhapur University uh, in Maharashtra, state of Maharashtra in India. Like uh, he is a very diverse and rich personality as, as of I have known him like for last one year, connecting him through various conferences and also knowing him from social media and uh, through his articles, which he publishes very regularly in newspaper art, newspapers. And apart from that, he also works uh, extensively on his research work. Like being an economist, his core area is public finance, which aligns with Dr. Ambedkar. Uh, apart from that, he has been like he has written extensively. I would say like instead of taking names, I would just would like to give numbers. He has written more than 200 research paper articles. He has been contributing or editing book chapters. He has it has the number goes beyond 500. So I can't name it. It would like uh, I would uh, actually take the whole time in introducing him. And he has been part of various com committees. Uh, from UGC till his university and it, it goes beyond 30, 35. So like, and he has presented his papers in various countries. I would just can say like that only uh, various countries and all. So his main work is in public finance and economics. So uh, like while following him, I recently followed his one of the paper which he wrote about uh, I like uh, the challenges of agriculture and how uh, Dr. Ambedkar's perspective fit here. So in this contemporary time, I really uh, felt that it would be like very good opportunity to listen from an expert and also an economist what they feel that what in this contemporary challenging time of agriculture sector, what Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar's economic perspective would have worked or would have been come as a remedy. As we all know, Dr. Ambedkar being a practicing economist, he was also a, a student of economics. 
so his ideas or his views come from a very strong economic background so uh, saying this before, like be, like not taking more time i would like to invite uh, professor kamble to uh, take forward the uh, talk and please uh, do share your ideas and views on this dr kamble please thank you very much thank you one and all am i audible yes you are audible yes sir yes, sir. Uh, at the very outset i am very much thankful to boston study group all officials and officers of the group and dear participants and friends really it's a proud and privilege for me to speak on a very important personality for which this group or this organization is working that is dr b r ambedkar and all of us know dr b r ambedkar was a trained economist and more importantly he was a policy maker to correlate dr b r ambedkar with america all of us know that he did his ma and phd in columbia university in us and which was followed by ds and other other uh, contributions to the economic theory and practice as well but in addition to that in the pre independence period he was a policy maker and contributed a lot in the growth and development of indian economy especially in the planning and development of indian economy as a well. whole and in this backdrop what he contributed is significantly greater and as of, as of greater significance in the contemporary india i should say uh, to the globe as a whole as well and therefore i thought that i should speak on this very important contribution that dr b r ambedkar has uh, made uh, to the economic research in general and policy making in particular he was not just a theoretical economist but he was a practical economist he has contributed very significantly in the formulation of development policy not of only india but across the globe as well when the second world war uh, world war took place and the responsibility of formulating a development policy of the countries affected by the second world war it was assigned to dr b r ambedkar and consequently Uh, his contribution to the growth and development of indian economy in the in the laying down uh, planning and development policy of india as well it was significantly greater and significantly relevant as well the topic which i have chosen is very relevant contemporary its its relevance is very uh, in the context of present time or present period and therefore i thought that i should speak on what dr b r ambedkar has given a development policy for independent india and what provisions were there what dr ambedkar was forecasting what dr ambedkar was prescribing what dr b r ambedkar was proposing on the one hand and whether these thoughts policies and measures those have been suggested and prescribed by dr b r ambedkar are being practiced in the post independence india or not in that direction there is a need for assessing what dr ambedkar talked about what was the views and thoughts of and policies of dr b r ambedkar were there relating to the post independent india and and what measures he have been implemented to what extent he has been followed and he has been implemented in the post independence period especially with emphasis on yes indian economy as a whole now i am going to present before you what he was talking about a development policy for india especially pre independence india and to what extent india has been endeavored to implement the policies and measures those have been prescribed by dr b r ambedkar and more importantly what present problems what dr uh, dada sahab was talking about what are the present problems and challenges before indian economy in particular and across the globe in general and how the policy prescriptions that have been discharged that has that have been given by dr ambedkar are useful in the present context as well in the present contemporary indian globe as well and in that direction i am endeavoring 
so far as my lecture is concerned. So I will share my presentation uh, that will be more uh, uh, relevant and more re reliable so far as my lecture is concerned. Uh, is it okay? Is it a slide is visible the other side? Yes, is it visible? Yes, very much. Okay. Uh, okay, already I have mentioned that my, my title of my speech is, my talk is, are we deviating from development policy proposed by Dr. B.R. Ambedkar and majority of analysis that I am placing before you is relating to India. Some uh, across the globe references also can be there. But my focus is on Indian economy and prominently with reference to the development policy, we, uh, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar has suggested. Now, so far as my plan of lecture is concerned, in the beginning, I will introduce the topic, which will be followed by what Dr. Ambedkar proposed a development policy for India and prominently where that will get, where that literature is available, what are the sources in which those have been uh, created by Dr. B.R. Ambedkar, which are available, in which we get development policy that, that is suggested by Dr. B.R. Ambedkar that I will try to place before you. Then it will be followed by what is the present status of India in general and policy in particular. What, what is the status, present status of India? And next part will be followed by what policy is required. Yes, it will be in the framework of what Dr. Ambedkar has talked about for the growth and development of the economy within the, within the framework of what Dr. Ambedkar was expecting, what he has prescribed, what he has uh, uh, recommended in that direction that I will try to place before you. And in last section, I will conclude what I have talked about, I, what I wanted to talk about and what can be a, a future direction so far as uh, the growth and development of the Indian economy as a whole. First of all, development policy plays a very important role. And development policy is the variety of measures which are included in a policy, which attempt for realizing growth and development of the economy. And everybody knows growth and development of the economy is contributed by a variety of economic activities, a variety of development activities, which are categorized or classified into prominently three productive sectors. Number one is primary sector, we also refer to as agriculture. Number two is industry sector, it is also narrowly uh, referred to as uh, manufacturing sector. And thirdly, service sector or tertiary sector. And all development activities, all economic activities contribute to these three productive sectors as the result of that. Overall economic growth of the economy is realized, it is materialized, and that we measure by making use of a, a indicator or parameter, and that is gross domestic product or GDP. Gross domestic product or GDP. Now the thoughts and policies which Dr. B.R. Ambedkar has suggested relating to a development policy for independent India, that will get prominently in two sources. Number one is his research paper entitled as Small Holdings in India and Their Remedies, which was published in 1980, 1918 in the journal, Journal of Indian Economic Society, Volume 1. It doesn't only talk about agriculture, but it's a development theory. It's a part of development policy that Dr. Ambedkar has tried to place before us. What are the details that details I will try to discuss before you that I will try to place before you. In addition to that, a very important uh, book, a very important policy document <coughs> that Dr. B.R. Ambedkar has uh, placed before us. He has contributed before us, and that is his book, namely States and Minorities. And both of these documents, both of these uh, books, both of these contributions, what Dr. Ambedkar has contributed is a development policy for India. And that development policy is expected to enable India 
to realize the overall rap and rapid economic development of the economy that will tackle socio economic problems and challenges those were there or those are there before the indian economy and supplementary to that it those also can help us in providing policies and pres prescriptions across the countries in the globe as a, as a whole while talking about the first contribution that is small holdings in india and their remedies actually it's a development policy it's a development theory that dr ambedkar has contributed he has given it talks about agriculture in particular but at the same time it talks about prominently development of industry sector and he tries to highlight before us he tries to uh, place before us the number of issues and challenges those are there before the indian agriculture which are not allowing the development of indian economy in general and other productive sectors like industry and service sector in particular i should give the significance of this theory dr ambedkar proposes that india is known as agriculture country and agriculture is less developed but agriculture is under developed but at the same time the prominent feature of indian agriculture is it is under developed it is backward prominently it is a it is a non irrigated or less irrigated therefore indian agriculture is described as also gamble on the monsoons but if the more peculiarity or the prominent peculiarity of indian agriculture is the dependency on indian agriculture is significantly higher dependency on indian agriculture is significantly higher and this makes indian agriculture less developed or under and therefore dr ambedkar talks about there is a need for taking away withdrawing of the surplus labor power from agriculture and absorbing it in industry or non agriculture sector that can help us in the growth and development of not only indian agriculture but also the entire economy entire economy of indian economy or india as a whole such a type of analysis later on such a type of propositions later on were made by arthur levis and he propounded a theory known as unlimited supplies of labor and agriculture development his contribution got nobel prize his contribution was recognized in the globe as a whole but before that dr ambedkar contributed the development theory or development of agriculture but his thoughts his contributions his theory was not recognized by globe as well as india that that's a thing that i want to place before you while talking about the his contribution entitled small holdings in india and their remedies the point which i wanted to bring to your notice is that same analysis same thought same explanation was given later on by the contributor by the economist like arthur levis his contribution in economic theory was recognized by the globe as a whole for which he received nobel laureate nobel prize but that recognition was not given that it was not recognized the contributions of dr vr ambedkar and that's the thing which is necessary to be uh, taken into account taken into consideration now what he talks about in the small holdings in india and their remedies dr ambedkar says isolatedly or separately development of agriculture will not help us in development of indian agriculture as well as economic development of the entire economy what is required it is required he has suggested number of measures and remedies in that direction there is a need to follow need to go that only can help us in the development of agriculture in particular but the entire economy or development of the entire economy as a whole as well he says in in this research paper he says agriculture is a primary industry and its development is of crucial importance its development is of crucial importance 
and unless and until its development is carried out the development of the entire economy the, the development of the industry sector is not possible then he says agriculture in india is very important because it's a fundamental industry it's a primary industry because it's a man's or main source of subsistence the subsistence of the people subsistence of the uh, indian population depends upon agriculture and therefore its development is of greater significance its development is of greater significance that dr bairam bilkar says supplementary to that agriculture has a potentiality agriculture has a capacity to supply raw materials to industry and allied activities allied sectors as the result of that simultaneously along with the development of agriculture development of industry and service sector also takes place and therefore it is of crucial importance more importantly he talks about it is a source of food unless and until agricultural production takes place the survival of the people is not possible because it's a unique source of supply of the food and therefore the development of agriculture or the importance of agriculture is of greater significance it is of greater relevance that he talks about then he says there are certain problems before the agriculture economies and indian economy is agriculture economy definitely those problems are also there in india or indian economy as a well. whole these are what to produce in what proportions factors of production to be used and what is the size of land holding these are the prominent problems problem pro prominent challenges before the agriculture economies and consequently those are also challenges before the indian economy then he talks about what are the major problems relating to agriculture those are there that india has been facing he said size of holding is significantly lower in india average size of holding is very lower and he gives a statistical information about that before independence there was a provincial government and in the provincial government in assam the size of average size of land holding was 3.37 acres during 1896 to 97 which further decreased to 3.2 acres on an average during 19000 to 1900 to 1991 and in bombay province even the size of holding is comparatively better there is a decline in trend in the central provinces only in the central provinces a uh, increase in the size of holdings observed by dr bhar ambedkar and in madras a constant size of holding was observed the point that dr ambedkar tries to place before us is it is the size of holding size of holding is significantly lower in india the major second problem that before the indian agriculture he talks about is a significant significant lower agriculture productivity but before that the size of land holding is lower size of land holding is lower and that he tries to explain across the states also and he has given a data about the baroda state and how the size of total size of agriculture land is there how it is divided into number of surveys all data is there you might be watching and what is the total number of khatidars are there and what is the average size of that size of land holding it is there all data he tries to place before us and last data uh, statistical information is very important he says average area of land holding in baroda state is 3.5 acres is 3.5 acres that is there actually we should look at dr bhar ambedkar as a very serious researcher in this particular research paper he also gives the data about size of land holding relating to a village in pune pune district of maharashtra state in india that is a micro study micro village level study and the relating data also he has placed before us so as to analyze and explain the problem of size of land holding in that particular village in that state as well as nation uh, as a whole and he has given a data what is the total number of plots uh, in 
पिंपळा सौदागर व्हिलेज नियर पुणे इन पुणे डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ महाराष्ट्र अँड हि सेज द नंबर ऑफ प्लॉट साईज इज जस्ट टू टू थ्री एकर्स जस्ट टू टू थ्री एकर्स अँड दॅट नंबर इज सिक्स्टी सेव्हन द नंबर ऑफ प्लॉट हॅव्हिंग साईज ऑफ होल्डिंग वन टू टू एकर्स इज वन हंड्रेड सिक्स्टी फोर अँड प्रॉमिनेंटली हि सेज द नंबर ऑफ साईज दॅट इज थर्टी टू फोर्टी गुंटाज ऑफ लँड दॅट नंबर इज सेव्हन्टी फाय and the size of land holding between 20 to 30 guntas is 136 that he reveals that the maximum size of land holding in pimpla saudagar village near pune pune district of maharashtra is 20 to 30 guntas only that is about a uh, half acre or more than that a little bit that he talks about then he says a, a major problem relating to indian agriculture that is dependence of population on agriculture as the source of livelihood he says in united kingdom the dependence on agriculture as a source of livelihood is just 15.3% in ireland it is 44 45% in america it is 33% in holland it is 69% but in india it is more than 71% that is more than 70% population of india was depending upon agriculture as a source of livelihood and it is excessive dependency it is excessive dependence of the people as a source of livelihood and to that extent uh, dependence is not required and that has become a hindrance that has become an obstacle in the agriculture development in particular and the development of the entire economy in general that dr ambedkar argues then he talks about how the productivity of indian agriculture is significantly lower compared to the developed countries or other countries across the globe and he makes a comparison of productivity of indian agriculture in terms of wheat and maize per acre and he says it is significantly higher in uk it is significantly higher in canada it is significantly higher in new zealand so wheat and maize but comparatively in india it is lower and he gives the statistical information relating to uttar pradesh punjab and bombay which were part and parcel of india the point which he proposes or the proposition he tries to place before us is how the productivity of indian agriculture is significantly lower and that's a challenge that's a problem before the indian agriculture uh, that is necessary to be taken into account necessary to be taken into consideration that is there then he says what can be way out that is discussed across the economic literature or economic theory and he says consolidation of land whatever small size of land is there fragmentation of land has taken place traditionally it is being the remedy that is suggested is consolidated of land and for that reason it is said that enlargement of land should take place but dr baba sahib is uh, different he says the definition of economic unit given in economic theory or literature it is traditional it is traditional in this in the in the size or uh, on the front of supply side on the front of uh, on the front of demand side and not on the front of supply side and therefore he gives what is economic unit or what is economic size of a land holding he says that he has given that definition that is each of these new plots must be having a size with regard to local conditions of soil tillage and form of economic field that will keep family fully engaged and support family that is from the demand side the size of or economic unit of economic size of land is being defined but dr ambedkar says it is it is incomplete it's half truth it's half scenario it's half picture we should look at the supply side also because only the size of land holding is not contributing to the agricultural production and agricultural produce the supply side that is the inputs the factors those are also prominent and their utilization their use their application is also of crucial importance therefore we should not look at economic size of land holding or economic unit of land holding from consumption perspective only 
demand perspective only, but we should look at supply perspective also. And in supply perspective, he says, the size of land holding also should take into account the inputs or factors of production or productive resources which are used, land capital labor, their use, their proportion, that is also of crucial importance, that is also of crucial significance, that is necessary to be taken into account. And while talking about this particular issue, Dr. Bawasab says, we have a declining trend in the number of plows, carts, and cattle, cattle, animal in India. The number is declining. And he has given a data how there is a declining trend in the number of plow being used, number of carts being applied, number of cattle being used, and other domestic animals and resources, which are helpful for us in the growth and development of agriculture. And therefore, he says, the perspective looking towards economic or uneconomic size of land holding, it is not just the size of land holding, but what is the proportion of the inputs and productive resources which are being used for the growth and development of agriculture produce or agriculture commodities, that is necessary to be taken into account. That is necessary to be taken into consideration. And therefore, Dr. Bawas Ambedkar says, our perspective looking towards perspective look, looking towards size of land holding, economic unit of land holding. It is not just the size of land holding is sufficient and adequate. In addition to that, what are the resources? What are the inputs? What are the proportions of the resources? Those are being used. That is of crucial importance. That is of greater importance to be taken into account uh, that is there. In addition to that, he also talks about what is the availability of land per habitant or per household? And here he mentioned that, that availability of land in France is greater, in Russia is greater, in America is greater, but in India it is just one acre. It is significantly lower. And that also makes a less development or underdevelopment of Indian agriculture, according to Dr. Piara. This part of his research paper is significantly greater. That proposes before us the development policy for India, development policy for the globe as a whole. He says there is an excessive labor power absorbed in agriculture. And for the development of agriculture, for tackling the problems and challenges before Indian agriculture or agriculture, what is required? It is required to take away labor from agriculture and absorbing them in non-agriculture employment. He says there is an urgent need for generating non-agriculture employment and taking away what Arthur Lewis talked about. Before Arthur Lewis, he, he gives analysis and explanation. He says there is an urgent need for taking away, withdrawing of the excesses labor power in agriculture to the non-agriculture industry sector that is there. Then he says the Sure remedy or measure on Indian agriculture and the problems Indian agriculture facing, that is industrialization. He was of the uh, belief that, he was believing that industrialization is a, a definite source. It is a sure source of uh, agricultural development and development of the entire economy. And therefore, we should not look at only agriculture development efforts are sufficient for us for agriculture development and consequently development of the entire economy of India, that is not, that is not true, that is not correct. What Dr. Babasab says is there is a need for industrialization. Industrialization can realize development of the entire economy and prominently it can help us in development of agriculture as well. And therefore industrialization is very important because he says it is a proved remedy in America. It is a prude and powerful remedy experienced in America and that can be applied in the country like us. And therefore, uh, there is a need for industrialization that is there. Supplementary to that, he talks about it can be effective in the control of subdivision and fragmentation of land. It can help us in the growth and development of manufacturing. Already it is proved in the, in the economy of a country like America. And therefore, in that direction, there is a need for endeavoring effort so far as agriculture development is concerned. 
Thus he says, it is not just concentration towards, it is not just focus towards agriculture development that can help us in tackling the problem of small size land holding, fragmentation of land, land holding, over dependence on agriculture, then uh, fragmented land, lower productivity, excessive dependence, etc., etc. There is a need for exploiting and utilizing industrial development, industrialization. Industry and agriculture should develop hand in hand. That only can help us in the development of entire economy, in the development of industry sector, in the development of agriculture. That can help us in overcoming challenges and problems which Indian agriculture has been facing, Indian economy has been facing, and those can be applied to the globe as a whole. Also, that is his proposition. That is his, his remedies and measures for development of the entire economy. It is not only for the development of agriculture. And therefore, his contributions relating to small size of land holding and remedies, it's not just for agriculture development. It is for development of the entire economy. It is for the development of overall economy. It is for the rapid development of the economy as a whole. That is there. His second contribution is his book on states and minorities. His book on states and minorities. It was published in 1947. Actually, the book of states and minorities is a memorandum of a, a social organization he was running and that was All India Scheduled Caste Federation. The memorandum that he wanted to submit to the Constituent Assembly, Constituent Assembly, that is incorporated or that is the States and Minorities book, which has been published. Actually, it is, it is known as a proxy constitution. It is in the form of constitution. Preamble is there, articles are there, sub-articles are there, sections are there, number of things are there. It is, it is a proxy constitution of India and that is a development policy which he has proposed for independent India that is there. What he says, the development policy should endeavor for removing, eliminating inequalities. And he says inequalities means social inequality, political inequality and economic inequality as, as well. And for removal of inequalities, he suggests there is a need for providing better opportunities to the marginalized classes, to the submerged classes that can help us in empowerment socially, politically, economically to the deprived communities, to the marginalized communities and efforts or policies and measures to removal and elimination of inequality should be part and parcel of a development policy of the independent India for the Indian economy, that is number one. Then he says there should not be any discrimination. Discrimination by the government officers with, the, with, with his staff and discrimination by the private employers with his labor or with his servants. That discrimination exclusion should not be there and the basis of that exclusion and discrimination can be race, can be creed, can be social status. That discrimination, exclusion should be considered as a legal offense. It is a, it is a legal crime. And the status of legal crime should be given as the result of that. No discrimination by the officers with the uh, assisting staff or by the private owner to the servants, to the labor class that will take place that is there. More importantly, he talks about how the development of Indian economy, entire Indian economy can be realized. It can be materialized. And for that reason, he says, there is a need for key industries to be developed by the state. Key industries shall be owned and run by the state. Key industries, important industries, should be developed in the public sector by the government, by the public sector that he says. Further, he says, along with key industries, in addition to key industries, basic industries also should be owned and run by the government or its corporations. Thus, growth and development of 
key industries and basic industries the duty and responsibility of the government and its corporations is undertaking that he talks about because unless and until growth and development of key industries is there basic industries there overall industrial development will not be possible and prominently the development of the entire economy will not be possible and private sector is not in a position to realize and materialize development of key industries and basic industries because it requires huge capital investment the gestation period of such industries is significantly higher but those have spread effects backward and uh, forward and that can help us in the development of other industries in the development of entire industry sector and the development of entire economy as a whole entire economy of that country and therefore it is the sole responsibility of the government its public sector to realize to achieve and to endeavor for development of industry sector and basic industries uh, and that should be owned by the government its undertakings its corporations that is there then he says in any development policy insurance should be given a significant place it should be given a significant relevance because insurance provides social security and there should be it is due to the responsibility of that country or economy to provide social security or protection of the social security and in this regard insurance can play a very important role but insurance in private sector cannot serve the purpose it will not be in a position to serve that purpose and therefore insurance should be the monopoly of the government government should be the owner of insurance government should provide insurance services and thereby social security services further he says life insurance is more important and every citizen of indian economy every citizen of india should take life insurance policy and that should be provided by the government that he says then he talks about agriculture again after the small size of land holding and dairy it is his perspective here looking towards agriculture is uh, totally uh, advanced more developed he says agriculture should be given a status of state industry or industry agriculture should be considered as the industry and prominently state industry that is industry owned by the government that he talks about nationalization of land nationalization of agriculture that he talks about then he says the government will be owner of that agriculture and it will be the duty and responsibility of the government it is also described as state socialism philosophy of dr bhr ambedkar he said nationalization of agriculture will take place government will be the owner of industry agriculture as industry and it is the sole duty and responsibility of the government to realize and achieve growth and development of agriculture in in particular and agriculture owners and the people which are depending upon which depend upon agriculture as a source of livelihood he says all land will be uh, 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 transferred towards the government by the private land owners and for that reason compensation will be given to the land owners private land owners for who owners or individuals in the form of debentures that debenture will get cash payment and that debenture is transferable and inheritable property as well and the debenture holder will get income in the form of interest he will get income in the form of interest and the agriculture as an industry or agriculture industry will be organized as the size of land holding will be economic the land will be cultivated by the tenants collective farming or cooperative farming will be will be uh, practiced and rules and regulations will be prepared and to be implemented by the indian economy and the tenants will carry out agriculture uh, operations and they will get they will get payments it is the duty and responsibility of the government to provide for inputs to provide for agri- uh, credit to provide for Uh, finance to agriculture, and in return, whatever the total agriculture produced that will be produced, that will be divided into different parts and shares, 
one part will be to the government as the owner of the land another part will be to the government as the supplier of the inputs and productive resources another part will be uh, distributed among the tenants and the tenants of the land that will be will not be based on any caste creed religion etc etc and one share will be again kept with the government as a penalty to the tenants those who will violate rules and regulations those have been formulated by the government by giving a status of uh, industry to the agriculture especially state industry or public industry that he talks about then he says uh, it is the duty of the government it is the duty of the government to provide for basic necessities of life for the survival of the poor people for the survival of the marginalized group for the survival of the depressed community in india and for that reason he says there will be a collection of the land and that land will be distributed among the poor people among the marginalized groups and that will work as the source of livelihood or means of livelihood that he talks about prominently in the development policy he he talks about representation to be given to the marginalized to the depressed community from india schedule caste schedule tribe minorities obcs etc etc and he said representation means uh, reservation in services reservation in jobs and that reservation representation in union services that is central government services in state government services and also local body services and that representation that is reservation affirmative action that should be in in proportion of the population because those are exploited those are depressed those are victimized and justice is uh, has taken place against them and therefore it is the sole responsibility of the government to to protect them to survive them and for that reason reservation or representation in services should be given in all categories of services union government state government and local government as well uh, that he talks about further he says service commission public service service commission should be prepared and that commission will look after uh, at the recruitment of the servants or recruitment policy and a representation to the backward communities that should be given in that service commission that also argues so as to protect preserve the interest of the marginalized groups depressed communities backward communities that is there in this development policy has he has talked about education all of us know dr ambedkar was a highly qualified during that period during that era and his maximum education was completed in foreign countries that of america that of england that of germany and others as well and he she was saying education is a very effective means of rapid and all round development of the economy it empowers self identity it strengthens agitation it strengthens uh, uh, other uh, personality development activities and features and therefore he gives more importance to education and he was a highly educated highly qualified person not only in india but at global and international level as well and that was considered that was recognized by the columbia university and columbia university in america uh, declared dr ambedkar as the most meritorious as the most meritorious student in the last 100 to 100 years and his birthday 14th april was uh, was was declared as knowledge day and his this idea was also taken into account by the union united nations organization and seems that uh, 14th april is being celebrated across the globe across the countries in the globe as a knowledge day which is the birth anniversary of dr ambedkar the point which i am trying to communicate to you is that in any development policy education should be given a uh, given a priority education should be given uh, importance and how that education system should be there and how it should be developed what should be the duties and responsibility of the government in the context of educational development he talks about 
he says financial responsibility of growth and development of higher education is of union government and state government state government and union government should endeavor for development of education development of higher education in that country he says there should be a separate budget for education he described it as a education budget education should be given a separate budget because education is very important it is very effective it is very uh, it is very uh, uh, significant in many respects and many, many dimensions and therefore there should be a separate budget for education then he further says financing for secondary and college education it is due to responsibility of state government state government should discharge the responsibility to to provide finance for growth and development of secondary and college education then he says foreign education can be effective it can be uh, significant it can be really uh, relevant than the education in india in, in some of the areas uh, technology can be there engineering can be there medical can be there and therefore access to foreign education to the scheduled caste marginalized groups deprived community should be given and for that reason uh, provision in the annual budget should be made by the government and he says at least 10 lakh rupees per annum should be a budgetary provision should be made so that access to the foreign education will be will be uh, available to the marginalized groups to the scheduled caste scheduled tribes obcs that argument he makes then he says special grants for expenditure on advancement of primary education that should be given by the state government and union government the duty and responsibility of the growth and development of the uh, primary education is of the local government is of the local bodies but central government and state government should should assist to the uh, local government in the growth and development of the primary education advancement of the primary education uh, that he talks about then he says surplus land should be collected for that reason settlement commission should be set up and it will look after the distribution of the land across the uh, marginalized groups depressed groups in the country like us then he says every government state government and union government should purchase minimum productive resources for making provision of at least survival of the poor people survival of the backward communities depressed communities Uh, that he talks about these are the 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 provisions these are the provisions these are the policies these are the remedies we dr b r ambedkar has suggested which are part and parcel of the development policy and he was talking about he was he was expecting these will be the part and parcel of the development policy for the independent india in addition to that before independence during uh, 1942 to 1946 Dr. B. R. Ambedkar was a cabinet minister in Council of Ministers in the in the pre-independence period during British era during British period. He was cabinet minister of labour. He was cabinet minister of water resources. He was cabinet minister of power or energy resources, and he has laid foundation of planning process in India in the pre-independence period when the responsibility after the Second World War was given to Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. to prepare a plan and to implement the plan as the result of that revival of not only indian economy but the majority of the uh, country's economies will take place which were badly affected by the second world war and in that situation also dr ambedkar has played a very vital role in laying down planning and implementation of the plan in the pre independence india also and the sum totality of that that gives us a development policy that dr b r ambedkar has given for the india for the independent india and that is what he was expecting so far as growth development size and direction and uh, 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 rate of the development of the indian economy as a whole now what is the present position of india after 75 years what present position of india is and how the thoughts and policies we dr ambedkar has prescribed are helpful at this moment also in the corona pandemic situation also that i want to place before you number one is that in india 
economic inequalities are growing significantly and rapidly. And in the states and minorities, he has very clearly pointed out that there is an urgent need for controlling all categories of inequalities, social inequalities, political inequalities, economic inequalities to some extent. India has succeeded in bringing about political uh, equalities, controlling political inequalities, but to the extent required social inequalities and economic inequalities, India didn't succeed. Social inequalities are there. One of the uh, research, uh, research was carried out by Professor Sukhdev Thora and, uh, and his, his colleagues. And that study clearly uh, reveals that social inequalities are significantly higher. That study was carried out on behalf of the Dalit Institute of Dalit Studies, on behalf of the Institute of Dalit Studies by Professor Sukhdev Thora and his colleagues. And that clearly reveals that social inequalities are significantly higher. So far as economic inequalities are there, uh, Oxfam report before Corona pandemic revealed the data that in India, 1% households have purchased 73% share in total income, wealth, and consumption in India. And during Corona pandemic also, these economic inequalities have significantly grown. The additions to the billions list from India has increased. Asset wealth of the rich strata of the society in India has increased even, the, in, even in the corona pandemic uh, period also. But poor have become poorer and uh, a significant increase in the unemployment has taken place. And this is the scenario. So far as uh, uh, poverty is concerned, uh, employment generation has decreased very significantly uh, uh, during Corona pandemic period. Before that also, to the extent required and desirable, no attention was paid towards the employment generation and tackling the problem of unemployment. All of us know India has an advantage of demographic dividend. But unless and until education is given, health is given, and employment opportunities are generated, we are not in a position to extract the benefit of demographic dividend. But in Corona pandemic and even also before that, also in 2016-17, NSSO presented a report, and that report was saying that India's rate of unemployment was 6.2 percent, and that was the highest in the last 40 years. But during Corona pandemic, rate of unemployment has significantly increased, and that has increased to 23%. That has increased to uh, uh, 20%, and recently it is 10%. Economic theory says rate of, rate of unemployment, 3% is variable and affordable to any economy. It is called as natural rate of unemployment. But the present rate of unemployment is about 10%. It is significantly excessive. And the reason is significant to the extent required and desirable employment generation and tackling the problem of unemployment has not given that attention which was required. And majority of the population, depending upon agriculture as the source of livelihood, majority of Indian population is working as informal sector labor. And consequently, during pandemic and before pandemic also, because of growing unemployment and uh, a significant fall in employment generation, poverty has increased very significantly. Poverty in the corona pandemic, crores of people have been converted into poverty. And before that also, poverty is significant in the country like us. Prominently, the poverty line defined in India is very meager. Uh, the latest uh, poverty line has been defined by C. C. Rangarajan uh, Group uh, Committee. And C. Rangarajan Group says in urban area, when a per capita per day consumption expenditure is 42 rupees, uh, then poverty is not there or it is above poverty line. And in rural areas, a person getting per day per capita consumption expenditure or income that is uh, 38 rupees, uh, that is the people is. Uh, uh, people are not in poverty. At international level, poverty line is 2 American dollar. At international level, poverty line is 1.25 American dollar. When it is taken into account, on the one hand, the poverty line that has been defined in India is very narrower. It is very narrower and that couldn't give justice to poor and poverty as well. And therefore, multi-dimensional poverty index was uh, calculated that major was proposed 
and it was calculated. And as per that multi-dimensional poverty index, 55% population of India is in poor or it is in poverty. And Corona has very badly affected poverty because through employment generation or fall in employment and increase in unemployment. In India, Dr. Babasaheb was saying there should be a combination of private sector and public sector. But after 91 onwards, privatization is taking place very rapidly. And during Corona, uh, what government policies have been prescribed are privatizing uh, rapidly. And in the budget for the year 2021-22, a rapid privatization, very intensive extensive privatization of public industries is taking place, place public sector is uh, taking place. In addition to that, privatization of insurance, banking, and finance is rapid. The recent budget only 74% share uh, has been given to the foreign direct investment. Previously, it was 49%. So, a, a, greater, a greater intensive privatization of in insurance sector is taking place. But Dr. Ambedkar was of the opinion that there should be a monopoly of the government over the insurance sector. It should be in the hands of the government, in the hands of the public sector. But we are privatizing uh, uh, public sector insurance uh, corporations. And to the greater extent, private players are being admitted, private players are giving uh, more and more access. And we are also giving foreign access to the investment in insurance sector as well. In supplementary to that, in India, agriculture uh, was not given a status of industry. And it was not given a status of uh, public industry or government industry. And consequently, in the, uh, agriculture is privately owned. Small and marginal uh, farmer, the number is significantly higher, and the problems are as it is what Dr. Ambedkar has analyzed in his small holdings in India. Uh, that is, fragmentation of land is there, small size of land holding is there, over dependence on agriculture is there, productivity is lower, all problems. What Dr. Ambedkar uh, had analyzed in the year 1980, all those are there uh, in 2020 21 as well. Supplementary to that, Dr. Ambedkar suggested representation to the deprived communities, but the reservation policy was accepted. It was accepted too late, but implementation is not sincere and honest, and it didn't give justice to the deprived communities, to the marginalized groups that has taken place. Uh, education, the status of education is, uh, it is very horrible. It is very dismal and disappointing. Uh, Dr. Ambedkar was talking about a uh, separate budget for education. But India is spending both central government and state government on education is less than 5% of the GDP. Actually, it is 3% or more than that. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Kotharia Commission in 1960s suggested expenditure on education should be 6% of GDP. 100 years back, Chhatrapati Shahmaraj of Kolapur Kingdom, he talked about Expenditure on education should be at least 5% of GDP. But now we are talking about expenditure on education, we will uh, reach to the 6% of GDP. It was suggested in 1968. Before that, it was suggested 100 years back. Now we are thinking about spending on uh, education will, will reach to the 6% of GDP. That we are talking about. So we are very much backward. And consequently, education exclusion is there. Gross enrollment ratio, higher education, just 26%. There is a wide disparity across the rural area, urban area. There is a wide disparity across the male and female. There is a wide disparity across the social groups as well. Scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, minorities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. One, one study was carried out by Bosant and Singh. And he estimated what is the potentiality of India to participate in higher education. And what is actual realization of the uh, uh, realization of participation in higher education? He said uh, the entire potentiality to participate in higher education of India is 44%, but actual participation is 10%. Across the social groups, a wide disparity is found for scheduled caste. Potentiality is 44%, but actual participation is just 4%. For scheduled tribe, Potentiality is 40%, actual participation is 3%. That wide disparity is found across the social groups also, across the rural urban, across the male-female. Male-female disparity is also uh, significantly uh, higher. There is a problem of survival and livelihood. Corona pandemic has posed a, a very intensive problem of survival and preservation, maintenance of livelihood. 
because livelihood has been lost and major uh, uh, share of the labor power is engaged in informal sector and a very meager share of the labor power has been absorbed has been engaged in formal sector that is uh, the problem and this is the present status of, of uh, economic growth or economic uh, uh, situation in different like us then what is required in the framework of in the framework of what dr ambedkar has given a development policy for india what is required it is urgently required to give a industry status to agriculture because perspective of people looking towards industry is different from that of uh, that of agriculture and therefore when agriculture will be given a status of industry all inputs will be uh, available uh, credit will be there inputs will be there resources will be there and consequently that will help us in the development of agriculture and agriculture development will take place then there is a need for industrialization of indian economy already dr ambedkar has placed before us in 1918's research paper industry is a remedy it is a proven remedy it is proven in us economy it is proven in america so we should stick up for we should endeavor for industrialization what dr ambedkar has suggested then employment uh, should it is very important because india is a highly populated country and demographic dividend is available for india that can be extracted then and then only when the efforts will be made to generate employment opportunities for that reason what is required it is required pro employment growth or development policy and that is of crucial importance the further uh, provision is the reservation policy is required and it should be implemented with rigorously sincerely honestly and more privatization is taking place and automatically the reservation is taking place and it is it is high time to implement reservation policy in private sector unless and until in that direction the efforts are made we are not in a position to give justice to the deprived communities to the backward communities and therefore what is re required it is rigorous sincere and honest implementation of the reservation policy in government and public sector and prominently as the, the sector is becoming narrower and narrower this representation or reservation policy in the private sector is necessary to be implemented there is a need for arresting privatization that is taking place and education should be given a status of social or public good education is being given a status of private good or marketable good and that is not conducive that is not suitable in the country like us there is a need for giving a status of education Uh, 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 social commodity or public good that will serve the purpose and that will uh, assign the responsibility to the government to realize and materialize and to endeavor for development of education by the by the government that is urgently needed now we have a major proportion of poor people we have a, a higher level of unemployment we have deprived and marginalized groups and therefore there is a need for implementing universal basic income scheme and corona pandemic has very adversely affected poor strata of the society informal workers casual workers and urgently it is needed to implement universal basic income scheme that is being practiced that is being implemented across the countries in the globe and it is high time to implement in the country like us supplementary to that budgetary provision on welfare of the marginalized groups backward communities it is it is uh, decreasing it is lower but at the same time it is also unspent it is also not being spent fully and that that due attention is required as the result of that more budgetary provisions for the growth and welfare of the backward communities deprived communities that will take place and more importantly urgently it is required to tackle the problem of poverty measures and policies to be implemented as the result of that poverty will be arrested poverty will be eliminated and it is high time to control inequality inequality is growing very rapidly recently only oxfam has given a report and oxfam says during corona pandemic also richer have become the richest and in the budget as well as development policy of the government no reference of the inequality is there and poverty as well the budget has been announced for the year 2021 22 but no reference of the poverty no reference of the inequality that is there and that is necessary to be given importance social security should be given more importance because for poor for the marginalized groups social security is of crucial importance it is of greater importance that gives a surety that gives assurance 
of at least survival and that is also required to be uh, paid due attention thus this is what i wanted to place before you what was the uh, development policy dr ambedkar has proposed for independent india what we are implementing what is the present status of indian economic policy and what changes and modifications and revisions which are required in the development policy of india in the framework of what dr b r ambedkar has suggested in that direction there is a need for underway under endeavoring effort or uh, attempting that will help us in the revival of the economy overall and rapid development of the economy justice to the marginalized group well so well social welfare maximization maintenance of the equality maintain uh, tackling the problem of poverty and uh, unemployment etc etc that i wanted to place before you uh, thank you very much to organizers boston study group all listeners and participants thank you very much thank you uh, thanks a lot thank you very much here i am stopping any question any comments any query is most welcome i ready to answer thank you now thank you very much okay over to over to dada sir over to you much professor kamle it was well organized it was like wonderful relating from his work till the concurrent policies and all so i'm really looking forward for people to have a lot of things to discuss with you so if anyone has any question please uh let us know hey dada sahib okay uh, i have a question for uh, professor Ka- kamle ji Most welcome, sir. Most welcome. Okay, so Javim Sahib, uh, it is really very, um, very strong lecture. Means uh, considering that we uh, people from the technical industry doesn't uh, uh, get into the economics and all this. So this is very interesting to know about the economics and all this. So I, I have a question. Means I have basically two question, but first I will ask uh, one question. This. Yes. Um, agitation going on in india regarding farmers correct so yes. all these three laws which uh, government has passed yes yes, yes. Uh, from baba saheb ambedkar's economic uh, or the, his thought process on any agriculture industry and all these what you narrated in the beginning how how does these three law fits and what yes. uh, the farmers in india are asking yes. for how does it fits means okay. where the, the, it contradicts with the baba saheb's thoughts and where it doesn't I, I I got your I got your question. Uh, what agitations uh, are taking place of the farmers in India? Their solution is there in both the both the contributions that Dr. Ambedkar has given uh, that of small size of land holding and states and minority as well. Already I have mentioned in my analysis and presentation and lecture that in India status of industry is not given to agriculture. and consequently as the result of that what is happening to the extent required in agriculture development is not taking place at this moment also about 60% population of india is depending upon agriculture as a source of livelihood and we didn't succeed in uh, realizing and achieving industrial development as the result of that we didn't succeed in taking away surplus labor power in agriculture towards the non agricultural and industry sector Dr. Ambedkar was saying agriculture should be given a status of industry as the result of that. What will happen? Rigorous efforts, sincere efforts will be made towards the agriculture development. Credit supply, input supply, factor supply that will be there. Talking about the farm laws, actually these farm acts are for the benefit of the farmers, but farmers are agitating for more than seventy days or more than that. What does this mean? This means that. Far- farmers and thinkers also studied and analyzed these three farm acts and they found that there is not benefit or welfare of the farmers in these in these acts in these acts there is a contract farming in this act there is a corporate farming in this act there is a privatization in this act no 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 provision of the minimum support prices there is a discarding of the uh, Uh, apmcs agriculture produce committees and therefore farmers want minimum support prices farmer want uh, sale of the agriculture produce and farmer didn't want corporate farming and contract farming as well and they found that the provisions in these acts are not 
in the favor of benefit of the farmers and therefore they, those are agitating and there they are uh, absolutely right what i wanted to suggest is that uh, the the policies we dr ambedkar has given for the agriculture development like that of industrial development like that of size of land holding in the in the framework of uh, uh, his two contribution that will help us in agriculture development and also help us in tackling the problems of the farmers as well as indian agriculture as a whole over to you dada sir thank you so much pankaj go ahead and ask the question pankaj um, your voice Hello. breaking yeah now Hello, audible and yeah, now you are better you are give me two minutes give me two minutes yes okay. am i audible ah yes audible go ahead go ahead yeah so uh, thanks dada uh, and thanks professor kamle it was a very uh, informative session uh, <clears throat> so my uh, my question basically surrounds with an idea uh, of uh, what you presented and the current circumstances uh, like uh, the contribution of ambedkar uh, dr ambedkar looking at agriculture sector was more of a nationalization of agriculture sector Uh, if i get it right yes sir uh, and given the current farm laws and agitation in india uh, like you rightly pointed out there is a corporatization then there is a contract farming that is being proposed and that's what basically is the point that the farmers are raising but my argument to it was like if you are talking about the nationalization of agriculture policy uh, given the performance of other sectors where there was a lot of uh public sector involved and there was lot of red tapism and bureaucracy involved wouldn't there be a risk of putting all the eggs in one basket if we just try to propose saying that uh, we want to have a nationalization of agriculture sector rather than having a mixed model where we try both uh that that's my question so suppose uh, uh, nationalization of uh, indian agriculture is concerned dr bhar ambedkar prescribed that suggested that but we didn't listen to him and consequently agriculture in, in, is in private sector even if we, it is in private sector what your problem that dr ambedkar has analyzed in the 1918 those are there and those have been intensified those have been intensified and in the context of industry also dr ambedkar has clearly mentioned basic heavy industry should be in the public sector and small micro micro medium industries should be in private sector but at this moment not a single industry in public sector is there all have been uh, privatized and in the budget for 21 22 a significant or rapid higher level privatization has been proposed so this is uh, this is converse to the what dr ambedkar has prescribed and what we are uh, taking decisions on formulating policy and implementing as well and consequently what uh, dr ambedkar has given solutions in the form of policies and measures we are taking steps converse or reverse to the prescriptions and suggestions uh, suggestions what dr ambedkar has made and and it is therefore it is therefore in the framework of dr bhar ambedkar there is a there, there is a potentiality there is capability to, to tackle the problems of indian economy in general agriculture in particular and industry sector uh, also and therefore we should formulate policies we should formulate implement measures in the framework of what dr ambedkar has suggested that will serve the purpose that will help us in tackling the problems of agriculture in tackling the problem of industry in tackling the problem of education otherwise the intensity of those problems and challenges will be intensified further its its gravity will increase and therefore it is high time it is urgent need of the hour to listen to dr ambedkar listen to thoughts and policies what dr ambedkar has prescribed proposed and suggested that would only help us in tackling the challenges and problems already i have mentioned in my lecture that potentially that capacity capability uh, is there in the thoughts and policies and 
uh, what Dr. Ambedkar has given prescription, those are urgently needed. So far as tackling the problems is concerned, what I thought, that is my, that is my proposition. Over to you, Tata Sahib. Thank you. Uh, is anyone with the question? Or was there any question posted on uh, YouTube? Let me know. Dada, may I ask one more question if you are now? Yeah, sure. By the time I just did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, sir, uh, another question that I had was uh, regarding the uh, proposition of like uh, movement of labor from agriculture to industry and to services. Uh, yes. Like you rightly pointed out that uh, if we just talk about the numbers, uh, we have 50 to 60 percent of the labor uh, in the agriculture sector. But you, if you look at the contribution of agriculture sector in GDP, uh, it's 14 percent, 14 to uh, 18 percent year about. So. That's that's a lot. That's a lot of scope to improve upon the efficiency and the productivity. Now, my yes. question is: We talk about moving those labors to the industry, but for those labors to move to industry, would need skill, okay? And if you look look at the China model, they have been able to manage that and improve upon the skills that their uh, citizens have. Now, government in India uh, after 1991 uh, has tried this model. Uh, improving the skill levels of people and moving to the industrialization. But we have not been that successful. So what could be the basic crux reason uh, why we have been not able to uh, make that transition when we clearly understand the problem? Your, your question is very relevant. Uh, so far as uh, removal of the surplus labor power from agriculture to non-agriculture employment is concerned, First of all, to the extent required and desirable, we didn't give attention towards industrial development, which was expected and desirable. Dr. B.R. Ambedkar was of the opinion that if we want to realize and achieve agriculture development, only measures and attempts directed towards agriculture development, those are not sufficient and adequate. Because isolatedly, we cannot achieve agriculture development. What is required, first of all, Surplus labor power absorbed in agriculture is necessary to be taken away, necessary to be removed, and that is possible through non-agriculture activities development. To the extent required and desirable, we didn't succeed in industrial development also. And recently, the contribution of industrial development is also not significant. It is about 30% uh, less than 30%. Yeah. The, the contribution of agriculture is declining. But at this moment also, agriculture is the major source of providing employment. It is, it is fact, it is true that, that labor is not required, but people are absorbing in agriculture. It is because no non-agriculture sources of employment are there. And to the extent required and desirable, we have not endeavored in the direction that employment generation in non-agriculture, that is industry and service sector that will take place. And consequently, employment opportunities are available and no skill is available. That is not the case. Employment is not available and consequently, what skill is required, what skill development is required in that direction, no efforts have been made. Therefore, first of all, what is required to be done is to generate employment opportunities in non-agriculture, that in industry and service sector. That will place before us, that will signal before us what skills are required what skills are demanded. In that direction, the efforts will be made no doubt about that. But at this moment, the problem is that no employment is there. Unemployment is intensified. It is increasing very rapidly. And the scenario is not clear. Picture is not clear. What skills are required to absorb in the employment opportunities? That, that dilemma has been there in the country like us. And therefore, we didn't succeed in taking away excessive labor from agriculture. And we didn't succeed in increasing the employability and tackling the problem of unemployment that is there. What is required? It is required to give, uh, Dr. Ambedkar has very rightly pointed out, industrialization should be given a priority. And he further says, it is a prude measure in America, prude measure in America, prude remedy in America. But to that extent, we have not succeeded in industrial development. And consequently, excessive labor power is there in agriculture. We didn't succeed in removing that. Unless and until industrial development should be given a central place, 
central uh, idea we are not in a position to generate employment opportunities when we have employment opportunities available that skill is not uh, there or it is not available then efforts will be made in development and uh, uh, growth of that skill among the among the people among the labor in the country like us but at this moment what is required required it is employment generation and employment generation is a crucial problem it's an intensive problem it is a problem of higher gravity and in that direction what dr ambedkar has prescribed these prescription these measures and remedies are of crucial importance or of greater applicability uh, that what i thought that is there over to you dada sir thank you so much uh, before someone raises their hand i have a question for you yes yes most welcome most welcome so uh, like it is in global context so uh, the recent agriculture land survey which was published in 2015 16 has yes. shown that the land uh, acquisition the land um, is disproportionately uh, acquired by various caste groups in india and yes, when i when i'm talking in the context of uh, like schedule caste and schedule types it's yes, you are right it's very disproportional and yes you are and uh, and looking at the budget 2021 Uh, the education budget is not that substantial which could uh, like provide uh, free or whatever education is which is required to the deprived or oppressed population looking at yes. the scenarios and globally looking at the human development development index which requires health education and other employment which are the, like basic parameters of that considering yes. i i i feel as a student of uh, development economics that yes in in long term this will disproportionately impact the uh, the growth and human development of the oppressed populations in india especially uh, like schedule caste and schedule tribes so at yes. this point what could be the role of academia or activist to yes. uh, advocate with the government to go back to the propositions or suggestions provided by dr ambedkar which would enhance the development of this oppressed communities i would also really it's a, it's a question of high relevance greater importance yes all of us know so far as the ownership over the land is taken into account marginalized groups children caste children tribes are not owners of agriculture those are workers of workers in agriculture those are workers in agriculture and consequently the land purchased by the marginalized groups is just insignificant and uh, if anything is possible it is just in small size as the result of that they have no source of livelihood they have to depend upon uh, employment they have to depend upon uh, uh, that labor employment that is being provided uh, so far as budget for 21 22 is concerned you are absolutely right the other side uh, in budget no attention has been paid towards educational development for education development especially for higher education only one provision is there and that provision is setting up of universe central university at leh in ladakh in in territory and post matrix scholarship that is continued previously it was there but it is continuous it is continued and some two three provisions are there relating to uh, modernization of schools and primary schools in the framework of national education policy that government of india wants to implement these are only the provisions those are there government is talking about 6% of gdp to be spent but what provisions in the budget for 21 22 has been made those are insignificant and actually in 2068 it was expected and desirable to spend on education Uh, at six percent of GDP, but even in the year twenty one, also it is it has not become possible. So we are very much lagging behind so far as uh, attention towards the education is concerned. And already I have placed it before all of you, all of you that Dr. Ambedkar was of the opinion that education is very effective. It is a effective means of that development, overall development, and enhancement and uh, improving living standard of living of the people, especially. majlas groups and deprived communities and therefore he suggested a separate budget for education he also specifically mentioned that whose responsibility it is to develop higher education to develop college education to develop primary education all those details he has placed before us in the in his book states and minorities but the budget didn't take into consideration what dr ambedkar was talking about 
and prominently it is depending upon privatization and less attention has been paid towards the education development only one central university and continuation of the post matrix scholarship that is there in the context uh, in the context of education and some uh, uh, high schools and some primary schools modernization in the framework of national education policy that is there so far as what what responsibilities of the deprived communities activist uh, organization political parties first of all we should be as a pressure group we should create a pressure group we should analyze how the policies are faulty how the policies are incorrect and what dr ambedkar has suggested and how those suggestions and policies and measures have potentiality to tackle the challenges and problems before the indian economy before the marginalized groups before the scheduled groups and that should be placed before the policy makers that should be reached to the political party that should be reached to the parliament as the result of that that should be reached through our representatives in the parliament and uh, uh, in the rajya sabha uh, lok sabha that will help us in reaching our voice to the government and to some extent i i am uh, i am positive some in uh, some suggestions some some our uh, recommendations will be incorporated in the development policy in general and budget in particular and that will help us in uh, improving our conditions tackling our problems tackling our challenges that what i feel and that is there over to you dada sir thank you so much for your uh, answer sir now we have a question from fatima like she says that will training and certificate issue for new generation farmers and preventing the old through own measures reduce population pressure in agriculture sector so uh, it is not possible at all because at this moment also what dr ambedkar studied in 18 uh, uh, 1872 the dependence on agriculture was 72% of the total population at this moment about 60% of the population depending upon agriculture as a source of life so certification and training will not serve the purpose what will serve the purpose that is industrialization status of industry or agriculture non employment and non uh, agriculture employment generation that is required and in that direction no efforts are being made employment should be given a, a high priority because we are uh, surplus power we are uh, excessive population and the proportion of young population working population is significantly higher it is about 62% but to that extent employment generation is not being given that attention which is required and therefore what is required it is required to give that attention to employment generation uh, even in the budget for 21 22 no uh, much reference of the employment generation is there the employment is expected to be generated through the development of only infrastructural facility that is there and the the importance of manrega also has been eliminated has been reduced by allocating allocating lesser amount compared to the previous year and application of manrega now it is uh, desirable to be applied not only in rural areas but in urban areas also but the importance of manrega mahatma gandhi rural national employment guarantee program or act has been eliminated by reducing provision in the budgetary provision uh, of expenditure towards that these are the things which are necessary to be taken into account only training and certification will not serve the purpose number of things are there and the answers of them those those questions and challenges that we get in the contributions and prescriptions and suggestions what dr b r ambedkar has made uh, that i try to place before you that is there uh, over to you dada sir thank you so much now uh, shovik has a question so please go ahead hi am i audible yes 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 you are, you are. go ahead go ahead sir. Uh, thank you sir for your presentation it was a brilliant presentation and uh, i just had one question about uh, your presentation about uh, the point that uh, indian uh, agricultural land is of uh, like smaller sizes which is absolutely true like your data also showed but uh, there is also a related problem of ownership of land being heavily skewed in favor uh, of uh, you know the brahmins and the other dominant uh, caste in india 
now yes. one of the way uh, to resolve it is actually to take land away like what is basically known as land reform but a land reform at the same time would also lead to more fragmentation and more smaller sizes of land so i was just wondering while you are presenting like how do we reconcile these two things uh, of a uh, land reform and also the smaller size product uh, like smaller size land holding thank yes. you thank you very much very very relevant question thank you very much uh, in the framework of dr bhar ambedkar when we have to tackle and solve the problems and challenges before indian agriculture dr ambedkar had rightly pointed out number 1 industry status should be given to agriculture and prominently status of public or state industry should be given to uh, indian agriculture but that didn't serve the purpose that was not accepted and implemented consequently you are absolutely right there is a wide disparity in the ownership over the land and at the same time uh, fragmentation and sub division of land is also taking place number of parties are responsible for that what reforms are required in the framework of what dr ambedkar has suggested is the status of industry and status of public industry nationalization of agriculture and prominently land uh, in the in the in the hands of government that can serve the purpose otherwise land privately owned and fragmentation of subdivision that will not serve the purpose land problems can be tackled in the framework of dr b r ambedkar's policies and measures is industry status and public industry status at least if those are not we are accepting we should go for rapid industrialization we go for industry rapid industrial development and taking away a surplus labor power from agriculture to non agriculture and minimum support prices uh, inputs and irrigation facilities which are required to be given to agriculture and prominently there is an urgent need for giving some ownership of land to the proud communities schedule ka schedule tribe that is required and in that direction efforts and measures and policies are required both in the framework of dr bhar ambedkar as well as in another perspective also that i try to place before you thank you very much over to you dr sir thank you uh, like does anyone has any question now? Uh, like i would ask even though we are going ahead time i would ask one last question um most welcome most welcome when it comes to as, as you said that the uh, political parties or organizations working with oppressed communities should advocate or should be like the like kind of pressure group but um, reduction of the, their representation in lower and upper house as well as um, the states which were led by uh, left leaning uh, ideological parties are been uh, shrinking towards right wing so um, does it does it shows that that uh, due to uh, uh, caste system or due to stratification of society in uh, caste due to in india the left leaning parties which were in power of um, or which were in power in the states or which had some voice few years before has failed to raise their voices for this oppressed communities because of the caste system like um, i i i feel that uh, it can be one of the major reason but if you have any other uh, like views or propositions like through a economics perspective yes like yes this. very 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 important relevant question what is happening number one our representatives are not taking to consideration seriously thoughts and policies of dr ambedkar to the extent required we are not committed we are not obeying following dr bhar ambedkar's thoughts and policies number 1 number 2 lot of fragmentation and segmentation is taking place and consequently everybody has a different idea and that is far away from what dr ambedkar was talking about or what dr ambedkar has suggested now what is required it is required everybody wherever he is there he should follow dr bhar ambedkar we should have a integration we should have a uh, integration among all all representatives and all social organization political parties as well even those can be uh, participants and members of different parties as well so how we can have a integration how we are integrated 
how we are consolidated that is of crucial importance and what is more important is to follow dr bear ambedkar to follow ideas and thoughts and policies what dr ambedkar has suggested that only will serve the purpose otherwise more fragmentation more withering away from thoughts and philosophy and uh, prescriptions of dr ambedkar that will take place and that will intensify it will extensify and consequently that will pose a number of challenges and problems before the before the deprived communities scheduled caste scheduled tribe obesity that will take place so what is urgently needed is to take dr bear ambedkar very seriously to follow dr ambedkar very strictly honestly rigorously and to take a precaution whereby we are representing deprived communities backward communities then our duty and responsibility is to give justice to these communities in which political party is there uh, that doesn't matter at least uh, uh, to be more practical pra- practical we should follow uh, what suggestion dr ambedkar has given and we should be very sincere rigorous and honest towards the uh, the sacrifice which dr ambedkar has made for the overall uh, sec- uh, welfare and Uh, will prop the backward communities as well as will prop the india uh, uh, as a whole so our duty and responsibility is to follow very sincerely the rest honestly to dr ambedkar and we should have that concrete integration concrete consolidation that will only serve the purpose otherwise our challenges our troubles our difficulties will increase more rapidly more intensively and more extensively as well over to you dr sir thank you so much professor gamble it was wonderful listening to you and you were yeah, i i really appreciate the like resources or time you have in like invested in organizing such a wonderful talk and thank you so much for accepting our invitation to be part of ambedkar lecture series organized by boston study group so thank, thank you so my much. pleasure thank you anna it's it's my pleasure thank you thank you very much before concluding Dada, i would I, I would like to uh, announce the next um, talk, which has been organized on twenty um, seventh February. The uh, title of the talk is "Rise of Dalit Women: Journalism in Indian Media," and the speaker is uh, Meena Kotwal, who is uh, the editor of and uh, founding member of uh, founder of the Muknaik, uh, uh, the digital portal. And I, I am saying this; she is the first. Dalit woman journalist who has started her own initiative in the field of Indian media. So I would really appreciate if people would join her, join to listen her on 27 February. Saying this, I would like to conclude today's Ambedkar lecture series. Thank you, everyone, and Jai Bhim. Good night. Thank you, thank you, Jai Bhim. Thank you, Dada Sir. Thank you very much.